Welcome to the CardWiz demo. CardWiz is a tool for Appian's intuitive ERP software that quickly and easily creates forms and menu items. For this demo, I'm going to create a takeout form. Now imagine a pile of menus and we'll try to find out whose desk has the pizza menu or even worse, trying to find it on your own. If all this information was in one place, not only would it increase employee productivity, but it will decrease hunger pains. So let's begin. The first step the tool does is gather the installation information, version 8.7, the server, okay, got, the, got it, next. The next step is to create a development directory. I have several development directories for testing, but my main development directory has been deleted. I will have to recreate it. So let's do that now. Creating a development directory, we'll go to the installation, copy all the DLLs and any ancillary files into the specified path, which will allow you to compile and test the code. And there they are. Good. Now the next step is logging into the database. Since we got all the necessary information from the installation, the only thing we need to do is enter the password. Now we've got the database, we got all the tables. You can create a form for any table you wish, even if one already exists. If you don't enter the right information, the tool will tell you what needs to be done. Now for this example, we're going to make a brand new table, a takeout table. And this is going to be a very simple table for demonstration purposes only. Notice we have a wide, wide range of data types we can use. We also have the ability to make them nullable. If they're not nullable, then we get that familiar blue dot that indicates to the user that a field is required. We also have the option to add an employee edit field. This will indicate the last user to edit the record. Create the table. It's been created. Notice the text boxes get filled in. If we happen to remove one, you know, the tool will tell us. Okay. Now the next step is some top-level naming conventions. Many of these steps have their own naming conventions for their own objects that you can override if you have some specific rules for your own company. And notice we also have Visual Basic and C Sharp. I'll get more into that later. For now, we're going to accept the defaults. The defaults for the AL, again, they're naming conventions, and we can set default values for the fields if we wish. We can also designate one as an employee ID if we have not already done so. This function is the same as employee ID field in the create table form. Here's the UI or the form step. Their naming conventions, which menu we want this form to appear in. We also have to choose a lookup field. If we do not select a lookup field, the text box at the top of the form where the user enters something in to find a record will not function. Here's an advanced button. This brings up the layout of the form. You can move controls around if you wish. Let's move something around just because we can. Ooh, and look at that text box for the phone. Might be too small. I'll show you how easy it is to test and fix that at a later step. For now, we were just going to accept it. Next step is the find type, which fields we want displayed. And if we don't like the field name, we can give it a name that's better for the user. Next step is the permissions. If you do not set a permission, no one will be able to see your form. And now these are the solutions are going to get created. These are the SQL statements that are going to get created. If you want to check them, they won't be created. And this is where they're going to go. If you want to separate the code from the development directory, you can. You're just going to leave it. And if you notice, they will get created right here. There's the files, there's the solutions, there's the SQL, you can even you know, click on them to open them up, there's 
the naming conventions and so forth. Now this is where the code will get compiled and the SQL will get executed. If you do not check a box, the compiling or execution will not occur. You may not, for instance, want to enable the menu item if the code is not going to get pushed right away. But that is all up to you. You can also edit it before it gets compiled. There's the code generated for the AO. You can uh, change it if you wish. You can also edit the SQL. Or you can just execute and compile. It should get created and compiled, all good. If you want to see what's really happening with the compile, you check that box. And you get the output from the Microsoft compiler. What you want to see is zero errors. Good. We like zero errors. Good. And now we can test it. This will launch the intuitive application displaying the form we had just created. So let's see if it works. Doesn't exist. Good. Whoops. Oh, capital A there. Bad user input. But it takes it anyway. Notice that the phone did not fit. We can fix that. Just back up to the form step. UI step, hit the advanced button, click on the phone box, has a width of 50. Let's make it 100. Rebuild the files, compile, form compiled, good, test. And variety is good. Let's get some Chinese food in here. This good. And now the phone fits. We can accept that. We can check the find. Notice we changed the field name here. Records look good. But say you have a programmer that doesn't like VB, that knows C sharp. Well, that's not a problem either with this tool. Because we back up a few steps, choose C sharp, go back to rebuild the files, compile, and let's just take a look real quick. This is the one we opened before. Oh, little well, changes, huh? Let's see what it looks like now. Now it's done in C sharp. But does it work? That's the million dollar question. Let's say we got the Chinese phone number wrong. Well, we can just come here, open it up, change it, and it's been changed. So everything seems like it's working good. Okay, now let's say, oh yeah, let's look at this virtual machine. Here's a form that we created on this machine. And the interesting thing about this machine is there is no Visual Studio installed. So that's what the form looks like. We're just going to breeze through all these steps. Success. Let's test it, see what it looks like. Okay, looks good. Now here's the code that was generated. I added some code myself in Notepad. Let's save it. Compile it. And now we have just edited and compiled a form on a machine without Visual Studio and added a label, which is very powerful and very cool too. 
So if you have any questions, this will be on the users group. I will put some, I mean, I will be on the, us, the Yahoo users group. I will upload a couple demonstration forms created by this. And uh, if there's any features anybody would like to add, let me know. I could spend a year enhancing this thing, but I would prefer to put things on here that people actually want and use. So, thank you for looking, and have a good day.